Uh, we're happy to be joined today by Dr. Eyal Zimlichman uh, from Sheba Medical Center in Israel. Sheba is ranked uh, in the top 10 hospitals in the world. And Dr. Zimlichman is, uh, is Sheba's chief medical officer. And Sheba and Israel more broadly has been a global leader in COVID response. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Zimlichman, for making yourself available for today's discussion, and especially on such short notice. This is our second talk. You're truly a friend of our community, and we're grateful uh, for all the work that you're doing uh, and your incredible team at Sheba that's doing uh, for not only us in the community and the Jewish people, but really the world at this point. Um, the present tense in Israel is really the future tense in the United States as Israel has really emerged as the global leader in COVID response. And most of the medical community is really looking to Israel for what's, uh, what's in the future for the rest of us. Indeed, at our, at our last talk back in early March now, you gave us an account of how you expected events to unfold here for us in the U.S., which proved uh, very, very accurate. Um, so before we get into some of the more detailed uh, questions that we have for you about uh, what we may have in store for us going forward, uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, broadly speaking, um, the situation in Israel today. We hear cases and hospitalizations are rising, uh, mask mandates are back on the table. Uh, Israel's reconsidering some lockdown measures, I believe, and the approval of the third dose for people over 12. So how did Israel get where they are now? Uh, and what's the current situation? Thank you, Jeff. First of all, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to uh, come back and speak uh, to your community. You know, it's my pleasure. And of course, Sheba Medical Center uh, sees its uh, obligation to uh, Jewish communities around the world and, you know, especially in the US and New York. So it's really, it's really our pleasure, and um, you know, uh, hopefully we'll have uh, other topics to talk about in the future. But we're we're certainly at your service. Okay. Um, I think that um, you know, as we talk about the current situation in Israel, as as you mentioned uh, on the uh, beginning of your words, um, it, it is a window to what's going to happen in the rest of the world because uh, what we are currently experiencing, and we have so many cl uh, already clinical trials to show that is a quick waning of the effectiveness of the vaccines. Because Israel was the first one in the world to actually initiate a mass vaccination program. And we talked about that the last time, you know, how successful we have been in mass vaccinations, you know, how quickly we got up to uh, 60 plus percent of the population being vaccinated. And we did see for a couple of months, uh, COVID basically disappear. You know, we were talking about COVID in past tense. In, in May and June, people were traveling and everything was completely open. We uh, left masks, uh, um, you know, in the drawers for a while, uh, even in, in closed spaces, and uh, everything was 100% as it was. Unfortunately, two things happened. One was the Delta variant, and the second is that waning effectiveness that I was referring to. Uh, now, what um, the Delta variant is not that different from the uh, Alpha variant, which is the original um, variant that we were uh, facing with. Um, but that slight difference in terms of how contagious it is, and a slight difference in terms of how severe cases would be if you are on the Delta versus Alpha, uh, makes a huge difference because it tilted the table from uh, what we, where we were, which was the herd immunity uh, with 60 plus percent of vaccination uh, to a place where we're no longer at herd immunity. And once you're not in herd immunity, things start picking up just like they did back in February and March of 2020 when the whole thing started. So mm -hmm. this was the first effect that happened. Um, what you need to do at this point is probably get your vaccination rates higher so that you can reach herd immunity again. But then something else happened. And this is the more serious effect. And this is the waning impact of the vaccines. We're seeing it. Uh, we have strong uh, evidence in, in terms of the, uh, um, of the Pfizer vaccine, which is obviously the uh, predominant vaccination here in Israel. We're seeing something very similar also with Moderna, so both mRNA vaccines. And what we know already right now, and I'll be happy to speak more about it, is that in about six months post second vaccine, we're seeing a sharp decline in the effectiveness. Um, as you go out to seven and eight months, um, the protection is, is negligible um, even, even if you were in, um, uh, vaccinated with both vaccines as was instructed. Um, and of course, that created the situation we have currently in Israel. 
And again, because Israel was the first one to get the mass population vaccinated. By February, we, we had 50% of the population vaccinated, just to remind you. Uh, count six months from February, um, you reach August, and this is exactly where we are currently. With the holidays upon us and in light of the, some of this waning immunity and the Delta variant, the increased, uh, you know, so much more contagious, Let's just talk about some practical things. So should unvaccinated kids be around their grandparents or people that are immunocompromised? So again, you know, it depends on the vaccination status of the grandparents. And bear in mind, again, what I just uh, mentioned, and that is how long ago were you vaccinated? If you're elderly um, and you were having, you had your second vaccine uh, more than six months ago, or I even would say more than five months ago, you should consider yourself partially immune. And, um, and I would uh, caution um, individuals in that state to um, you know, stay away from children that are not vaccinated, stay away from crowded locations, just like we did before. Um, you know, I would question the immunity for those individuals. Mm -hmm. So going into a crowded space for an extended period of time with a population whose vaccination status is unknown or even known, I, I think I'm hearing, if your own immunity, if you're a certain amount of time out from your last shot, you need to be thinking about yourself as vulnerable. Right, right. Definitely, definitely keep the protection um, in terms of masking um, and, um, and, and, and be cautious. Um, you know, thinking about, again, I think part of what we're going to be seeing, people that have been vaccinated feel comfortable. You know, we've seen it uh, in the last couple of months. I was in the state twice over the last three months. People feel very comfortable. You know, they're saying, I'm vaccinated, right? I can do anything I want. Um, be mindful of that. That is changing. And mm -hmm. I think the more people understand that although we have the dual vaccines, if we're more than five or six months out, we should be very uh, worried about the, our immunity level. I mean, once you get the booster shot, I mean, again, that once that's available and you get the booster shot, um, you, you're protected again, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going back to uh, the situation where we were, um, you know, uh, three, four, five months ago, and, you know, we were looking that things are getting better, right? We're coming out of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I see in Israel, I have friends that are saying, you know, I'm, I'm leaving on vacation. I want to make sure I get the booster before I leave, mm -hmm. um, you know, to get my protection before traveling abroad. So for sure, um, the, the booster gets you protected again. You could uh, probably, um, you know, at some point drop off the mask uh, like we did before. We're going to go through a period where numbers go up and this would happen in New York as well. Um, I can't find a reason why not. So I think what's going to happen in New York is what we're seeing now in Israel. Uh, numbers go up on both uh, cases as well as hospitalizations, as well as mortality because of the waning effect of the vaccine. Um, as the more um, you get the booster shot, the more of the population, and especially the elderly that are most vulnerable, uh, that you get them on the booster shot, you have a better chance of uh, averting uh, some of the things that we've seen in Israel. And um, I can tell you, we thought at the beginning, we saw the numbers, we said, well, it's only going to be the number of people that get the disease, but we're not going to see an uprise in hospitalizations we're not going to see a high number of mortality because this is different, right? This is post-vaccine. Mm -hmm. I can tell you we were wrong because right now, if you look at the charts, we have um, a, a very large number of hospitalizations and a very large number of mortality because of the waning effects of the vaccine. This is now coming down. We're at a, at a very, better period right now in Israel because we're getting the booster into a large part of the population. Um, and that's going to make the big difference in terms of averting the situation we are right now in and getting us back to where we were, I think, in, in, in May and June, where things were much better. Giving another vaccine of the same material, which will generate the same antibodies. Some people are saying, well, maybe we should wait. Um, we should wait to see if they're going to have a variant of the vaccine that will be a little bit more antigenic, maybe different, more epitopes on it. And then, you know, rather than giving the same thing. So, so people are questioning, should we give the same booster, which is really the same thing, 
And so these two questions I get on it, I can't tell you either by text or email or something I, I, every day. So I wanted to know, I, I want to hear your theory and then just to see if it correlates with mine. And just so what yeah, we're talking about here is a, is a Delta or a variant specific booster in the future versus more of a, a booster on the vaccine that we already had, right? The third booster coming from the same vaccine, the same one you received on the first and second dose is very effective. We don't know how long yet because we'll need to have some time to pass, but it's very effective. The data coming out right now, and this is data from about three, four days ago in Israel, is showing that 16 days after your booster, there's 97% um, uh, protection from, uh, uh, from capturing the disease. Um, and, and that is very, very, very effective. So on the effectiveness question, receiving the same shot is very effective. I don't know how long it would, it would last. Would we need to get another vaccine six months from now again? Which of course we hope not to, but it could be the case. I wanna remind people vaccination for, for hep B, for example, is three doses. We all have been doing this for a while. We get one dose, second dose after a month, and the third dose after six months. So we've been all been doing this, three doses, that's it. You get immunity maybe for life, but certainly for a good number of years. Could this be that you know, a, a year from now we'll be sitting here and saying it's the same regimen for, for, uh, for COVID? It might be. It might be that three vaccines are enough. And reminding you again for hepatitis B, it's the same dose. We're not changing it from time to time. And this has been the practice for many years. Now, having said that, we will see new vaccines come out that have, uh, you know, that, that are more updated in terms of the variants, that are more specific in terms of epitopes. I think uh, Pfizer was mentioning that they uh, are looking to have one come out before the end of the year. So if you can wait to have your booster shot be an updated one, you should do that. But if you're six months out, don't wait. Get the same one that was that you got on the first and second, because it is effective. Uh, the biggest question today by us is the following: A uh, person came in, vaccinated six months ago, has antibodies, now is sick, um, or let's say an unvaccinated person is sick, and the 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 family members are are. Um, family members are home and are vaccinated and totally asymptomatic. The two questions, again, I think the most popular, I think the most popular, the most popular two questions are, can they pass transmit the virus? And the second most popular question is, should the other people quarantine or are they allowed out? Um, and I think we should rephrase the question in the, in the setting of not getting a third booster. Because obviously, if you, what you said from traveling, if they had the booster, then the answer is they could do whatever they want. Um, the problem in America is that booster is brand new, still going to be under the strictest criteria, over 60, immunocompromised, genetic, you know, genetic congenital anomalies. But so what to do in this flux period till everybody gets the third, per, third dose? I, you know, I would play it safe. So what I, and again, this is based on our experience because we went through this, okay? So we were asking the same questions a month ago. Um, we had employees at the hospital. We had a family member at their household sick. And, you know, the employees under the, you know, under the regulations that we had at the time with everybody being vaccinated were questioning us, should we come to work? You know, my, my kid is sick at home with me. Uh, I'm caring for him, I'm vaccinated. But I need to come, you know, should I come to work and possibly um, endanger, um, you know, uh, um, passing the disease to patients and so on. So um, we know that today. Uh, if you are definitely six months out from your second vaccine, I would urge people to consider themselves unvaccinated and just take the same precautions as we did before we had the vaccines. We remember that time. If there was a household member that was sick, we got into isolation as well. We were trying to minimize contact with that family member as much as possible. So, you know, trying to be on the safe side because we're, um, you know, we're um, concerned about the welfare of the community. 
Uh, this is the strongest message that I can relay out based on our experience in Israel. Have you seen a higher, either anecdotally or things that the Khalid is uh, registering after the third dose, a higher uh, side effect profile? Well, you know, it's still, uh, we don't have the data because uh, we're going through the, uh, the uh, process now of the third dose. So uh, we don't have uh, a large enough data to compare. I can tell you from my experience, maybe a little bit more of those very minor effects, a little bit more of a sore arm, a little bit more of the 24 hours, you know, I, I don't feel myself, but nothing more than that. We're not seeing anything major. I've actually not heard about, you know, uh, any nerve damage that we might have seen, uh, facialis or, or some other things that we have that were reported. I've not seen more of that. I have seen a little bit more of, again, the very minor effects we also see with flu shots that we receive once a year. The, the vaccines work. However, this is a variant and highly contagious. But at the same time, they say, well, take a look. Vaccines are working. The mortality rate is so small. So why get, and so I'll get a cold, so I'll get a flu. How would you address that um, sort of uh, uh, targeted message to those people? You know, at this, at this point in Israel, again, where we have a large part of the population vaccinated, I can tell you one thing. We have in, in the country right now about, um, I would say, 10 people, and I might be wrong uh, by one or two, uh, under 40 on an ECMO machine, okay, which is the most serious condition you can think about. Correct. Okay? End stage uh, lung. All 10 are unvaccinated. So if you're, especially for the young people, which is most of our problems, you know, yeah, under 40, right? Um, if you are not vaccinated, you're putting yourself at risk of dying, of being very severely sick. If you are vaccinated, your chances of getting that severely sick are very, very much minimal. Now, you know, I see people around, you know, some people get the disease and are completely asymptomatic. Some people get the disease and have a mild flu but some people get the disease and die. And it's not a small percent. Now, if I take the vaccine, we had another publish, publication that came out on the New England Journal of Medicine, the number one journal, medical journal in the world, um, just last week, that measured the side effects of the vaccine, showing them to be very, very minimal, much less, and this is a huge population, I think 2 million people uh, out of Klalit in Israel, um, showing very low numbers, even smaller than was reported on a very large population. But the other thing they have done, which is very nice, is they looked at the complications of COVID and they compared the two. Some people are saying, I'm not taking the vaccine because there's a chance of uh, damage to my heart, right? Myocarditis, pericarditis. The chance of getting myocarditis if you have COVID is 10 times as much as if you're getting the vaccine. So if you're worried about damage to your heart, worry about not getting the vaccine because then your chances of getting it are much, much higher. So I think all in all, when you think about the probabilities, when you think about the, uh, the chances we're taking, I think there is no sense in not receiving the vaccine. Absolutely no sense. Bigger concern, at least here, is the women and their menstrual period, fertility. It's a huge uh, question that we get every day. Right. Did they, did was, they mark on it? Did they mark on it? There was no evidence of that. Uh, there was no evidence of that. I know there's a concern about uh, infertility. Um, there's really no mention about that as well. Uh, there were some studies looking at uh, even sperm count um, in people post COVID. No difference than the general population. So many of the concerns that people uh, bring about have no scientific validity. Um, I would urge people to look at this uh, publication because they list the, uh, uh, the complications that people uh, reported. And, um, and, and they were all very minor and they were all fairly rare. Of course, apart from a sore, sore arm or 24 yes. hours of, uh, yes. of fever, which of course, um, you know, is, is nothing major. 